everyone, it's David Hyatt here, and this is the Do One Thing Well research project. And what I try to do each and every week is to look at these amazing brands and businesses and people who do one thing incredibly well. And I try to find out what their secret source is so we can go and apply that to our brands and our businesses and our lives. So that's why this thing exists. So think of it as a research project. And, and if you're interested in certain aspects, it's gonna help you. And if not, go and watch the next one it's, and it's cool. So trying to unpack their secret source. And so, you know, there are things out there. There are businesses, there are brands, there are products, there's services that, that literally get you to say that thing. Oh man, I wish I'd done that. And so, so that's what we're trying to do. And that's how I try and pick things. And because I'm traveling this week, um, I haven't got as much time, so I thought I'd go and share something that I'm working on anyway. I'm launching a, a big course in in January, and so I'm just going to share some of the research I'm doing on that right now. And in a way, I've been researching this thing for 14 years because I've been helping run the Do Lectures, and it's a small, magical event. And so, and the things we've learned have mostly be by doing things completely and utterly wrong, loads of mistakes, but after 14 years, we've got really, really, really good at it and, and maybe even world class at it. And so the key takeaways for you here and the reason we do them at the beginning and not the end is you might actually never get to the end. So, you know, here's some of my learning. And so one of my key learnings here is actually you can be incredibly small and incredibly powerful and less actually has more meaning than these big events. And also your weaknesses, what you think are your weaknesses might actually be your strengths. And that was actually true of us, especially in the first five years. And another thing is, a key takeaway is awkward, awkward rules actually really, really help you. Having something really odd, do you go, what? that actually makes you very, very different to everybody else. And you have to be not for everyone. And the other thing is, if you think you're doing a small magical event, in a way, what you are is trying to engineer moments. And if, if people remember your event and think of it as a, a magical event, it's because you created you know, peak moments. And, and there's an art to that. There's a subtle art to that. So... First thing to think about in this quick research project is the size. And for me, I always worried that actually I wanted to make the do lectures bigger. Um, I didn't actually want it to be just a hundred people only event, but our cow shed, you know, we can't make it any bigger because we have big plans for the do lectures, but actually the planning department in Keredigan uh, are just going, there's no way. Like you're literally not making that thing any, any bigger. And so we have this beautiful constraint. And actually the constraints that you have make you who you are. And so you think your weaknesses are your weaknesses, but actually maybe they're your strengths. And this is a piece of research I'm looking at into because I think it's really fascinating. It's by um, you know, Robin Dunbar. So he's a British anthropologist. And so his thesis is that humans could have no more than 150 meaningful relationships, a measure that became known as Dunbar's number. And, and actually, you know, there's a big thesis that you know, once you get over 150 people, that becomes known as a big event. And the thing that I've learned is this huge power of a small gathering of people, you know, 100 people is what we specialize in because we can't be any bigger than that. But anything bigger than 150 is actually a big event. And um, my area of speciality is doing small events. So we couldn't actually make it any bigger. And what we had to pursue then in, in, in it was to try and make it more magical. And I thought this was really beautiful. Um, it's, a, uh, it's by the artist uh, Emmanuel Lafont. He's actually done the drawing, but there's some real wisdom here. And, and so basically you can have five loved ones, you can have 15 good friends, you can have 50 friends, 
150 meaningful contacts, 500 acquaintances, and 1,500 people you can recognize. And you think, wow. So when you start to think about that, if you're organizing a small event, you think, well, and, and you want to go and make it bigger. Actually, maybe that constraint of you doing a really incredibly small event makes it more powerful. Because, you know, that's how the human brain works. You know, like, you know, Dunbar was right. There's a Dunbar number. Less than 150 is a very human event. And this is, this was a point when I read this, I thought, wow, the do lectures is actually onto something. And and it was so beautifully written. And every time I, I read it, it really still touches me now. And um, it's not often you can pinpoint an exact moment when life changed. But here's a picture of one of those rare gifts. Four years ago, I went to a little festival in Wales where it pissed with rain and my heart broke open so wide, I knew life would never be the same again. And indeed it wasn't. These past four years have you know, seen some pretty epic shit go down and all of it because of this one long weekend in Wales at the Do Lectures. Thank you a million times and a million times again for all that has happened to me, for me. It changed my life. Actually, it saved it. I mean, I read it and it still touches me every time I read it. And, and you think, wow, never underestimate the power of a small gathering. That's what I've learned. After 14 years, of, yes, I want to try and make it bigger. And, and, and like, literally, you know, your size is your strength, not your weaknesses. Your smallness is a strength. It's massive. And I sort of drew this, and it's a bad drawing, but it has some wisdom, hopefully. And the size of your event and the impact of your event are not correlated. You can have an incredibly small event and have huge impact. I mean, if you think about the cow shed in West Wales, 150 million views. And, and so that's to, peop you know, to people we'll probably never, ever meet and never know their name and, and never know how much we've helped them. But the 100 people who come, we will get the feedback because we, we've gone and met them. And we have, and you think, wow, you, you have only 100 people each year. But those 100 people go out into the world. And the ripples that they will go and make in the world because of maybe seeing something, thinking something differently, or, or actually having permission to go and do the thing they've always wanted to. That's really powerful. So do not underestimate the power of a small magical event to go and change things. And I love this from you know, Paul Graham. This was his advice to the Airbnb founders and when they were struggling to scale their business and, and, and why Combinate, it was all about achieving massive scale. It's like, and so his advice was counterpoint to everything they've been taught. So they, they were a bit like, what? And he said, look, how many customers do you actually have? And they said, maybe 50. And, and, and he said, well, where are they? And they sort of replied, well, they're in New York. He said, well, go to New York, take a camera, go and meet them all, knock on the door and say, hey, I'm the founder of Airbnb. You know, can I take some photographs? Can I write some better words? Maybe reprice it to a more sensible price. And, and that's what they did. And at that point, when they started doing those things, that's when Airbnb actually started to go and take off. So do things that don't scale. And yeah, you know, this is one of the books that actually, you know, really got me to think about the power of small. And it's called Small Giants. It's by Bo, Bo Berlinham. And the subtitle sort of says it all, really, is, you know, companies that choose to be great instead of big. Like, make sure if you're going to go and do an event, choose to be great instead of big. And, and it's a really great book. You should go and read it. And yes. So the second point, you know, if you're thinking about doing uh, like a, a small magical event is the importance of awkward. And uh, Pryor Parker, you know, I love this quote, gatherings that please everyone occur, but rarely thrill. And you can't be for everyone. You know, and for your event to really shine, there has to be people who go, I don't really like that event. In fact, they might even hate that event. And so her book, The Art of Gathering, is something I get everybody in our team to read. You know, she 
she really is perhaps one of the most articulate speakers out there on events and gatherings and and how people interact and, and why you need awkwardness as a, a as a rule in your event and you know if you think imagine this is you know this is you know dinner on blanc um and it's been incredibly successful because it has a set of awkward rules and like you know if you receive an invitation you need to bring one guest with with you you know and you know male on one side and and female on the other side uh, all whites including socks shoes head pieces dress formally and 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 outrageously but in good taste and and so you go you know bring wine and champagne or mineral but for no beer or spirits or soft drinks <laughs> You can imagine that you go. You have to wear everything white, and you think, "Wow, who's who's going to go to that thing?" That's a like that's a that's a big reason not to go, um, and yet it's been incredibly popular throughout the world. You know, there's even tell you how big the table is. You know, it must be you know, covered in white tablecloths. You know, there's no plastic, only glassware, and fine china. Um, and you must attend if you accept rain or shine. And you go, okay, the food must be of good quality, ideally homemade. You know, there is no MC and to the evening, everything happens through your group queues. And so even though it's quite a big event, it's much greater than 150 people, actually your table might only be 12 people. And so actually it's a really you know, powerful, small event for you and your friends. And the thing that's brought you together is the fact that actually you know, there's a set of rules that you have to abide by, which aren't easy. Like dressing all in white is not easy. In fact, it's really hard. So having awkward rules is really, really can help you define a small magical event. And you know, this is how you know we welcome people off the train, and and we we get people and prime them and go, hey, this is the end of normal. You know, the next three days and the three nights, things are going to be very very different. And it takes place on a, an old farm that is both beautiful and ugly. It's a hard working farm, and it's in a beautiful you know part of the world in West Wales in Cardigan, absolutely stunning. But it's not always pretty, and it's hard to get to definitely. But we try and you know, create a lot of myths in those three days and three nights. But I want to just share this thought with you, because I think it might get you to think about small magical events in a different way. And, you know, for a long time, I used to think my weaknesses or our weaknesses, you know, were weaknesses. And, you know, like it was hard to get to. It is hard to get to. I mean, it's literally closer to Ireland than to, um, to London. It is in the middle of nowhere. It's a beautiful, beautiful spot in the world. You know, West Wales is literally, you know, incredible. It's in a cow shed. It's not in a conference that you would know. It has crap Wi-Fi. It's for three days and three nights. I mean, it's, it's you know, all those things that in the early years, I used to think those were our weaknesses. But actually, there was a point where I really, you know, rethought everything. And I started looking at these weaknesses as strengths. Our strengths was it was hard to get to. Our speakers would come from all around the world. And because it was so blinking hard to get to, they stayed for the three days and three nights. If it was in London, they would just jet out. Straight out. It is in the middle of nowhere. It is in a cow shed. But when they come, there's almost like a church-like effect on, of the cow shed where you go, oh, I can have to go and do my best talk here. This is not another conference that you're going to go and do another of your same old talk you know drinking the same old bad coffee this isn't that kind of place and the fact that it's crap wi-fi means they have to talk to each other so maybe reframe your weaknesses into strengths that's what i learned it took me a long time to think about that but now i'm just going wow actually i, I wish i started to think that at the beginning, not after about five or six years. But, you know, in a way, because you're going to run a small magical event, if this is this piece of research is, is handy to you, is you've got to understand this is, you know, like your event, you are in the word of mouth business. 
and and word of mouth literally you know feeds off being remarkable you have to be remarkable and if you think about the old way of saying remarkable is people see things and they remark upon them and that is the, the true essence of the word remarkable and so you're in the word word of mouth business and if you want to be in that business you have to be remarkable so the, the third thing you know there's many things but like i just boil down to three things but think about like uh, doing a small magical um, event is really about understanding the power of moments and there's a great book by, um, uh, you know, The Power of Moments, you know, Chip and Dan Heath, and I recommend it. It's brilliant. And our lives are measured in moments. Defining moments are the ones that endure in our memories. So we have an awful lot of things that we have to forget. And I always kind of remember this, like, amazing film. And it was like um, Jim Jamoosh film, you know, Mystery Train. And there were two uh, amazing um Elvis fans and they came over for, from Japan they were like really like it was all about Elvis for them that was their entire life and they were going to go and visit Graceland and they you know they you know saved their money up and they bought a, like a, a, a really crappy motel room and you know, like so they went off to Graceland and this was the highlight of you know the last you know of their lives and so they went around Graceland and he was, you know, had his T-shirts and shorts on. He had his camera around his neck and he went around and like his, his mouth was just wide open. He's just going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is amazing. And then he got back to the, the motel room and he started taking photographs. And, and his girlfriend said, you didn't take a single photograph all day. He said, yeah, but I'll never forget those moments. I'll never forget that ever you know i'm gonna forget this bad light shade i'm gonna you know i'm gonna i'm gonna you know forget this crappy motel room you know that that rug with a hole in i'm and he started taking photographs of all these things he said i'm gonna forget all those things so people people forget average things but they don't forget peak moments and actually when you think wow that's pretty interesting so you think you might be in the small magical event business, but actually you're in the moment business. And how do you create those defining moments? How do you engineer those moments is a good question. And this is the Magic Castle Hotel. It's in the top three rated hotels in LA. And so imagine how many good hotels there are in LA. I mean, it's insane, right? So Four Seasons, whatever you can think of. And this thing has a tiny pool. It has frugal furnishings. It has bare walls. It's a converted two-story apartment complex. There's nothing fancy about this hotel at all. And yet what they did was they created a popsicle hotline so kids would want to go there. So they would phone up and you know, any time in the day, phone up and go, I need this lolly right away. And, you know, and then you know, within a minute, you know, there was, you know, somebody, you know, delivering that lolly on a silver tray with, you know, with white gloves. And, and for the kids, that was, that was their highlight of the stay. So the parents might not want to go on there, but the kids absolutely did. So they created that, you know, hello, you know, popsicle hotline. They created a peak moment. And if you actually think like a kid, that, that, was, that was the defining moment. And so you go, you know, someone delivers your lolly on a silver tray with white gloves, dressed as a butler. You're going, you're not going to forget that in any time soon. And what the book really is really brilliant at describing is that not all moments are equal. And, you know, that was an engineered moment. And for you, it's like, you know, if we think about the do lectures and it's on an old farm, not always beautiful you know, and we can't obsess on every detail. Um, what we can do is, you know, really focus on some defining moments. So, and some moments are just more meaningful than others. You know, we remember the best things that happened. We remember the worst things that happened. We also remember the last things that happened. Um, and the best way to think about, you know, like, you know, small magical events is to think in moments. And, and so you have to be, 
you know, you can't be remarkable everywhere when you're doing a small magical event, but you have, must be remarkable somewhere. So you can't be remarkable everywhere, but you can be remarkable somewhere. And so where can you, you know, where can you engineer those moments? So that's something to think about when you're doing you know, an event. And I love the community of the do, and that's the one thing I've learned. This thing is, is all about the com community. And, and I think that's the real power of a small magical event is, be, and that's why the Dunbar number is important because actually bigger than 150 becomes less human, but around 100 people is, is a sweet spot, you know, where you can really, really engage with another human being. And, and my biggest takeaway from the do is the power of the community. And I, I love this quote by Pam Orr, is you can never go wrong by investing in communities and the human beings within them. So I think about that and, and like anything, you know, like to do like a, a, a small magical event is, is it one thing? Is it, you know, this thing? Is it, it, it's a really big number of many, many things in order to get it right. And, and, you know, we've been doing it for 14 years and we definitely made a huge amount of mistakes, but we learned from each and every one of them to the point now where we are pretty incredible at doing small magical events. And so the secret sauce isn't just one thing, it's many things. And, and that's always going to be the conclusion of, of this research is, you know, it's, it's this and 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 all those things go into the melting pot and that, they come out to like your ability to go and do something incredibly powerfully well. So, okay, that was short and sweet. I'm traveling. Hope that was of interest and, and, and I'll see you next week. But, you know, at Hyatt Denim, we make the best jeans in the world. We do one thing well, you know, it, it's a huge scale. If you want to go and follow us on all these different things, you know, check out our, our newsletter, which is incredible. But yeah, take care and I'll see you next week.